All right. Welcome everyone to my monthly AMA. This is for the month of July 2018 and excited to be here and spend the next 30 minutes with you. So with that, let's dive right in. All right. Dylan at the top again. <laughs> Plus 10 trillion. Can we get an update on the Unity SDK? We know your partnership team attended Unity conferences in Asia recently. Have you signed any game developers to beta test the SDK? Has development even started on it? So as always, Dylan, this is an awesome question. Um, the answer is we're just now unlocked where we can start working on these things. So if we back up for a second, our goal is for Kin to be the most used cryptocurrency in the world. And our three-step strategy is one, have a blockchain that can support mainstream scale, to show the world how to use it by launching Kin and Kick and using Kick alone to make Kin the most used cryptocurrency in the world. And then three, rapidly expand that ecosystem beyond Kick so that it's in hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of, app, of apps. The big thing we have achieved since the last AMA is we have not only launched our fork of Stellar, but we now have Kin running inside Kick on that fork of Stellar. Now, before we were able to do that, there's no way that Kin would be able to handle even more than a couple thousand users because before that it was running on Ethereum. But now that it's running on our fork of Stellar, we think it will be able to handle millions of users. And so with that announcement, for the first time ever, Kick can start to roll it out at scale. You know, we have it in the hands of a couple thousand users today, but you'll see us start to ramp that now. But now we can also unlock it for other developers. Whereas before they would say, okay, we're really excited. We love this. How do we start building? You know, we're announcing these partnerships and we're doing all these conferences and, and we're meeting with developers and working with developers. We would say, you know, you can do this, but it would be with just a couple thousand users. Well, they, you know, we have tens of thousands, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of users. How, like, how are we going to possibly use that? So I think the exciting thing right now is, you know, step one, check, we have a blockchain that can support mainstream scale. Step two, half a check, we now have Kin running inside Kick uh, on that new blockchain. And now three, we can take that both Kin and Kick as a use case and that mainstream blockchain to other developers to really start working with them. So to answer your question with Unity, we're now unlocked where it's not just a great story that we can tell them, get them excited and start working together but we can actually start developing real use cases with their developers at Unity, but with people like IMVU, others, big developers, small developers. So expect to see some pretty exciting stuff about that uh, coming up. All right. Papa Bogdan. I always love this. <laughs> Will the inflation model be redesigned? This was addressed by you in an earlier AMA, but no updates were given, exclamation mark, question mark. What? Why do you gotta do that? Please explain how many years it will take to distribute the Kin reward engine and how the inflation will affect the total supply in the first year. Putting supply into the economy, the Kin economy, in a very thoughtful way is one of the most important things that we need to do. Um, you know, the, the critical innovation of blockchains is the ability to programmatically guarantee the scarcity of a digital asset and also guarantee the rate at which that asset comes into the circulating supply. So with Bitcoin, you know, it's based on the mining reward. With Kin, it was based on an ERC-20 token uh, with vesting schedules. And so what we said is, okay, we're gonna create this new token. It's gonna to be on the Ethereum blockchain to start. And that will allow us to guarantee that there will never be more than 10 trillion kin in circulation. And we said, okay, we're gonna sell 1 trillion of that kin uh, in a token sale. We're gonna set 3 trillion kin aside for kick, uh, vesting 10% a quarter for 10 quarters. And then we're going to set 60% of that kin, 6 trillion kin aside for the kin foundation as a tool to compensate other developers for integrating Kin into their apps and using their apps to drive demand for Kin as well and create interesting places for users to earn and spend Kin. And when it came to that six trillion Kin, we said 20% of what's ever left will go out into the market on a 
daily basis. So in the first year, you know, every day will add up to in the first year, 1.2 trillion. So 20% of 6 trillion, 1.2 trillion will go into circulation. Next year, you know, okay, we had six, but we gave it 1.2. So we only have 4.8 left. Okay, so we're going to give it 20% of that in the second year, 0.96 trillion and so on and so forth into eternity, if roughly. Every year we're giving out 20% of what's ever left and there's always 80% left of that. So that's what we said in our initial white paper. I think the thing we've realized along the way is giving out 1.2 trillion in the first year is, is a lot to give out in the first year. You know, it would effectively double the circulating supply. And so the question we're asking ourselves with the design of the Ken Reward Engine is, how, what is the most effective way to give it that can? How should we give it out? How much should we give out? At what rate should we give it out to maximize the growth of the economy and therefore maximize the demand on kin? And so we don't have anything we're going to announce right now, um, but I think it's a great question. And we will, we're super like hyper aware that the way in which we release the supply into the market will have a huge impact on uh, the demand for kin, the price of kin, all these different things. And as a big kin holder ourselves, I think we're super aligned with all of that. Okay. Chax Chaxine. Chaxine? I don't know that name. Somebody new. All right. Welcome, Chaxine. My colleague and I built the first kin related app nine months ago. Okay. It was early, the bot was neither officially accepted nor rejected from the Kik bot shop. We unfortunately received no communication from Kik beyond the blog post linked above until a few months later when we reached out to Kik requesting an update. It's clear Kik gained some experience marketing to and communicating with developers while building their chatbot platform. That said, I'm wondering why builders haven't been engaged to participate in working groups, provide SDK feedback, or IDA to discover improve it ways to care you could best incentivize product engineers. The current mobile SDK is missing a few table stakes crypto wallet features, such as the ability to back up your kin private key access. We want to build with kin again, but I must ask what incentives do we have today? So I think this is a very fair point. Um, by getting into crypto, we have to solve a bunch of things seemingly all at the same time. You know, we've talked before about compliance pieces, tax pieces, technology pieces, tech, uh, economics pieces, product pieces, marketing pieces. There's all sorts of things that we need to solve in order for this uh, economy to be successfully launched. And we can't do all those at the same time. And so my recommendation, I think, to Chexin is, um, it wasn't the right time to build with Kin. You know, before today, Kin could only support a couple thousand users. So even if your bot only got a couple thousand users, it would break everything. You know, that wouldn't be good for you, that wouldn't be good for consumers, and that wouldn't be good for Kin. So today now we have a blockchain that can support mainstream scale for the first time ever, and one of the leading blockchains in the world. So check, we have that today. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to package that up and make it really easy for developers to use. And by using it with Kik and integrating into Kik, we learned a ton of things on the technology integration. We already knew the product side, the go-to-market side from Kik Points, but we learned a bunch of things from the technology side. So, you know, check, we learned a bunch there. And so I think what's really exciting right now is now we're ready to take that technology foundation of a mainstream scale blockchain, take those learnings from the product side, the go-to-market side, and the integration side, and roll that out to the community. And so I think the incentives that you have as of today, this moment, are zero. Uh, you know, it'd be very, very difficult for you to do. Um, but I think that's going to change very soon. And when it does, I think you will need to evaluate for yourself whether it's compelling. Uh, but my bet is you will find it very interesting. So I would say stay tuned, uh, keep an eye out, and we'll go from there. Okay. And welcome. Thank you for building Bot on Kick. Are there any plans to renovate the Kick platform to help grow and/or retain users and stay fresh in the messaging space? 
It does state in the white paper that Kick is expected to be the largest player in the ecosystem. And if so, I would think that Kick has to play a major role in Kin's overall success. Can you elaborate? Um, so first of all, we don't expect Kick to be the largest player in the ecosystem. Um, initially, they'll be, you know, on day one, it will for sure be the largest player in the ecosystem. It's, you know, the first player in the ecosystem. And for a while, it will probably continue to be the largest player in the ecosystem because Kick has a ton of users and Kick has a ton of experience building economies around uh, these digital currencies inside their app. Um, but over time, the idea is that as more and more developers band together, you know, each individual might be smaller than some other developer that's being asked to join the Kin ecosystem, but all those developers together are much bigger. So as it gets bigger, they can bring on bigger and bigger developers, which makes them the whole bigger and so on and so forth to the point where our goal is for every developer that's struggling to compete against Facebook's monopoly joins the Kin ecosystem and joins together, competes as one and wins as one. So certainly it is our goal that every developer under the sun one day joins Kin. Now, in terms of your first question, are there any plans to renovate the Kick platform? This actually has been really interesting because the reason we launched Kin, why Kick launched Kin, is because Kick needed a fundamentally new way to monetize. It you know, wasn't able to sell things to users uh, through in-app purchase because it was competing against Facebook, who would just copy those things and give them away for free. And it wasn't able to make money from advertising because, again, competing with the advertising monopolies. So it needed a new way, so it launched Kin. It said, hey, what if we use our consumer community to drive demand for a cryptocurrency, a cryptocurrency of which there would never be more and of which Kick would own a big piece? So that's why we launched Kin. It was a way to, for Kick to monetize. But as we have been integrating Kin into Kick, we actually realized there's something more, something much better. And that is Kin not only represents a fundamentally new way for Kick to monetize, but Kin also represents a fundamentally new tool to build a community. What we are realizing is that there's all these things that we want users to do and ways we want them to interact and ways we want them to contribute to each other that without a sort of a cryptocurrency, a, a medium of exchange, it's very difficult to set up. But once you have something like Kin, once you can give something to users that they value, you know, they want more of it and they don't want to lose what they have, you can incentivize all sorts of very interesting behavior that can sort of become a fundamentally competitive tool to build something much better. And I think this is the most exciting thing about Kin for Kick is it's starting to feel, it does feel like the critical tool we were missing, not just on the monetization side, but also in our ability to build a community, um, to build a chat community. And so we are actually super excited about how Kin could revitalize Kick as a killer platform, not just the massive platform it is today, but one of the most important platforms, messaging platforms going forward. And we are very excited uh, to show the world how something like Kin can be a fundamental game changer for Kick and for any app like Kick. Rysum. Many in the community are expecting partners like Snap, Twitter, Tumblr, et cetera. But this comment in the KRE seems to contradict that. Kick is expected to be the largest digital service in the, its ecosystem. Does this mean we shouldn't expect partners with more users than Kick? No. Um, so I'm not sure what that line is, but I think when I read this line and somebody told me that there was a question about this and said, and I said, you know, we never said that. Uh, they didn't tell me what the question was. They said, hey, we said this. And I said, no, we never said that. Uh, and so they went and looked it up and it turns out we did say this. And that was surprising to me. Uh, you know, it was the reward engine RFC. And that was surprising to me too. We said, did say that because the whole reason we're building Kin is so that we can have much more weight 
us being us combined with other developers to compete as one. So it's not just Kick, but it's also developers that are the same size as Kick. It's developers that are smaller than Kick, and it's absolutely developers that are also bigger than Kick, coming in and competing as one. Now, why would somebody like Tumblr or Twitter or Snap join Kick when they're join Kin when they're bigger than Kick? And the reason for that is because while they may be bigger than Kick individually, they are much smaller than Kin overall. And the way I like to think about this is I sort of like to use the real world analogy of economies. You know, why would somebody join the EU when their economy is bigger than the economy of Italy? Now, why would Germany join if their economy is bigger than the economy of Italy? It's because while their individual economy may be bigger than one other person's individual economy, overall, they are much smaller than the EU. And I like to think about Kin in the same way. By putting all these developers together, big developers, small developers, and medium developers, we grow this massive overall economy, this massive group of consumers, this massive group of developers that together are bigger than any one community, not just Snap, Twitter, Tumblr, but Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and that together they can compete as one to the point where it gets to the point where you know, you're a developer, you might be the biggest developer on the planet, and it, now you realize that your individual economy, even though it's so big on its own, cannot compete with this overall ecosystem. And I think that's the really powerful thing of cryptocurrency is that for the first time ever, there's a way for developers to band together to compete as one. And that has never been possible before. And it's possible for the first time ever with Kin. And that is what we are moving as quickly as we can to put together is that network effect of you know, Kin is the most used cryptocurrency in the world. Either you join now or you join later, but the sooner you join, the bigger piece you get. So you should join now. I know you guys don't like to give Papa Bogdan. Second question, I don't know. Lots of discussion if there should be allowed two questions. We will take that back. That's something we are talking about, but I will do it. Uh, I will answer the question here. I know you guys don't like to give clear dates in the roadmap, but do you think that you'll be able to release the KRE in 20, 2018? The honest answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what is the KRE, first of all? The KRE is an algorithm that every day looks at all the transactions being done in the overall kin economy, whether you know the transactions in Kick or the transactions in IMVU or the transaction in any of these different apps, and evaluates how much each app is contributing to the overall kin economy and pays out a daily reward proportionally. It's sort of similar to the Bitcoin mining reward, but instead of paying it out to miners who burn electricity to secure the network, we're paying it out to developers who create interesting places for consumers to earn and spend kin. But to do that, to set up that algorithm, it's com very complicated, economically complicated, game theory complicated, because people are going to try to game the algorithm. You know, as the most simplistic example, if we just looked at transactions, somebody might go create an app that where you know a bunch of bot accounts just send kin around to each other. And so, you know, is that real transactions, fake transactions? Hard to tell. Um, and so the carry is quite a complicated piece of software, and it will be an iterative piece of software. So I think there's two things on this. First is, it will be sort of a manual carry. Already there is. You know, when IMVU joined, for example, they had an incentive that said, hey, if you hit these sort of metrics, you will get this much kin from the reserves of the kin foundation, paying out of almost like a manual KRE. So that would be the first thing. There'll be manual grants to bring in developers in, in lieu of having a completely algorithmic, decentralized can reward engine algorithm, which will come later. Um, the second thing is we will put out a version of the KRE when the time is right. That will probably start slow. You know, it will be completely algorithmic. It will be decentralized, and we'll put some kin into it. Uh, we'll pay it out to all the different developers, and we'll see what sort of results we get from that. We'll see how it was gamed. We'll tweak it, we'll add more akin to the algorithm, and we'll run it again over and over and over again. So I'd say two things. So first of all, you know, we already sort of have a manual carry today. That's what's bringing developers into the ecosystem. 
But two, we will start to roll out that algorithmic carry when the time is right, starting with small amounts so we can rapidly iterate and learn on what the most effective algorithm looks like. Savage, I don't know you, welcome. Hi, Ted, who's the other person on the foundation board? It seems this should be public info. So we do have another person uh, on the foundation board. It's myself plus one other person who is an independent. Uh, we are super excited about them. We've already started working with them, uh, but we haven't disclosed yet publicly who that person is. We will make an announcement around that uh, when the time is right. Kin fan, when do you hope to extend Kin integration to more Kik users? Edit, there are now 4,000 Kintu wallets according to the Kintu blockchain explorer created by Chancity. Thank you, Chancity. That's awesome. Uh, is there something you're not telling us, my friend Ted? Hmm. <laughs> I, I can't even hypothesize what that would be. Um, but there's a winky face, so I don't know. Maybe it's a joke that I just don't get. Um, <laughs> so let's go, let's go back to our three step plan. So scalable blockchain, kin inside kick, rapidly expand the ecosystem beyond kick. So let's let's dive into step two. And I love threes. So I've you know three sort of subsets, sub steps in step two, which is one launch in kick. You know we launched chat themes in kick. So check we've done that running on the new kin hybrid blockchain. Step number two now is to ramp it, to ramp up the number of people who have access to earning from polls on one side and then uh, spending with chat themes on the other side. And what that lets us do is to really see how users engage with it, get those first metrics, uh, and also test out our hybrid blockchain, see how it holds up under the scale. So, you know, Chancity has very nicely created the Explorer, so you will be able to follow along uh, with this as we ramp up kin inside kick. And then step number three will be to expand the number of ways you can earn and spend inside kick. And I talked about this a little bit before in the AMA. This is something I'm super excited about is when we think through what are all the ways that we could integrate kin into kick to get more people using it, to create more demand, to uh, make kin more valuable, what are all the ways we could do that? We realize that a lot of those ways will not only get people transacting in Kin, but they will also make Kick a much better product, a much more interesting product, um, like a real economy where users are coming together, exchanging value with each other, and where Kin is facilitating the exchange of that value. And we don't have anything we're going to announce today, of course, but there's tons of exciting things we have discovered where Kin can not only make Kick a lot of money, but it can also make Kick a much better product for its users. And not just for Kick, but for all the other developers out there as well. Uh, so we think there's something super interesting there, super exciting. So follow along, Chancity. You're the best. Thank you. OK, I'll pause for my coffee break. What avenues will you take when you start your marketing campaign with Kin or Kinit? What is the plan with that? Something we learned at Kick over the last ten years is just how important marketing is. You know, you could have, you can be early to the space, you could have the best solution, you could see the future first, but then you need the world to learn about you first, and that's a real race. And that's a marketing race. And so this time around, you know, we've learned a ton with Kick how to do that, how to hire for that, what the right metrics are. And so we are setting up an amazing organization, amazing people, amazing plans, all these things to be able to execute a killer marketing campaign when it comes to Kin for developers being the first part, but then also one day consumers as well. Initially, we will not be targeting consumers because we think consumers should just, it should just show up in the apps they use and makes the apps they use better. Uh, but the way to get to those users is through the developers who build those services for them. So you can see, you expect to see most of our marketing focused on developers. 
Uh, in terms of what the specific plan is, I don't think we're going to share what that specific plan is, but you will start to see pieces of that plan rolling out soon. Uh, and as you see those roll out, uh, you'll know what I'm referring to. And uh, we look forward to getting your feedback on Reddit. I love reading Reddit every morning, every weekday morning, most weekday mornings. And just like hearing what the community thinks about all these things and your ideas and things we might have considered or not considered. Uh, so I'll be really looking forward to, as we roll these things out, uh, what you think. Okay. If you decide to peg the price, I'll obviously not ask what you'll peg it, what you'll peg it to because you won't answer because we won't, uh, which is smart. <laughs> Carlsberg69, I don't know you, so welcome. Uh, but I'm wondering how long you will peg it for. I say you as in the Kin team, will it just be temporary for say a week or will it be until the market price catches up to the assessment price or, will, or if it doesn't, will you just stop? Wouldn't this create major confusion to the everyday user or one day earning 100K and one week later earning 1,000K, but both rewards being worth the same USD equivalent? TLDR, thank you. Price subsidizing for how long, until what happens, for what reason, and how to stop volatility. So let me start by saying that we will not peg the price. Um, the price of kin will be whatever the market sets the price at. You know, it's whatever people are buying it and selling for, that's what will set the price. And we will not attempt to peg the price either initially or over time. Uh, at least not that we have ever foreseen or discussed so far. What we will try to do is to control the perceived value of kin by consumers who are using it in these digital apps. You know, in Kick today, I can fill it a poll and get something like 50 or 100 kin. And what we don't want the consumer to do is to say, oh, one poll, 50 to 100 kin. Wait, let me do the quick calculation. What is that in US dollars? Oh, wait a second, that's a fraction of a penny. Is my time to fill out one poll worth a fraction of a penny. And the consumer will probably say, no, it's not. If I'm just doing this for US dollars, it's not worth my time. But that's not what we're doing. We're not saying earn kin to be able to get US dollars. What we're saying is earn kin because it's the only way to get chat themes. And so what is stable in the user's mind is I fill out a poll, I get 100 kin, and if I want to go get a chat theme, each of those chat themes costs however much kin. And that ratio between how much I earn and how much it costs to spend is consistent. Now, one of the big questions in the community uh, over between the, now and the last AMA was, you know, kin one and kin two and, you know, what's going to create demand for kin one? And wait a second, what's going on here? <laughs> So let me address that. Maybe this is a good opportunity to address that. Kin 1 and Kin 2 are the exact same thing. Um, they just so happen to run on different blockchains. Kin 1 running on Ethereum and Kin 2 running on Stellar. And you know, the first step was to have something like a very secure blockchain. Uh, so we launched on Ethereum. And the second step was to have a very scalable blockchain. So we launched on our fork of Stellar. And then step three is to combine the two together with an atomic swap bridge. Now, we haven't done that yet. And so until we do, kin one and kin two are actually different things. But as soon as we do that, they will be the exact same thing. So kin one will equal kin two, and we can forever forget that sort of confusing explanation, and we will just have kin. And there'll be an atomic swap bridge to bring them back and forth, lock it on one blockchain to unlock it on the other, and vice versa. So then the question is, well, what is going to create demand for kin? You're saying that you know you don't want a consumer earning kin inside Kick for its value in these dollars. Then who's going to, like how does demand get created? And that's a very good question, and it's it's a question of how and when. There are three ways, three ways that demand will get created for kin. The first way is with brands. Brands are going to want to hire consumers for either their opinions or their attentions. 
And to do so, consumers will want to get paid in kin. I'm a kick user. I, if I to get this chat team, I need kin. So if I'm going to watch your ad, you got to pay me in kin as well. That's what I want. So what are brands going to have to do? They're going to have to go buy kin to be able to hire consumers for their attention or opinions. That's step one. Step two is developers are going to want to hire kin. In Kick, there's all these things we do today with sort of uh, different advisors and consultants and outsource shops that we pay for within US dollars. But there might be a more efficient way to hire consumers directly using Kin. And so again, Kick would need to go out and buy Kin to be able to hire consumers to pay them to do things that make Kick better and more valuable and more lucrative. But the third place that demand will get created for Kin is with consumers themselves. One day, we will allow consumers to directly buy kin with fiat currency. Why? Because that's when demand would explode. And we are all aligned that that's what we want. We're not going to do it initially because it would be confusing for the consumer. Like step one is not, again, I filled a poll to get 0 .1, 0 .001 US dollars, it's to fill out one poll to get one chat beat. But in doing so, once we get that up and running, we get millions of people earning and spending kin. This economy will be running and thriving and growing with more developers growing and more consumers growing and more ways to earn and spend kin. And at some point, there will be a correct point to then say, now is the time. Now is the time to let consumers directly buy kin for fiat. Why? Because some person is coming into the kin ecosystem. They're saying, look at all these amazing things I can buy with kin, but I'm late to the game. I just got here. There's already millions of people here. And if I want to participate in all these different places and do all these different things, like it's going to take me too long to earn up my kin. Isn't there a faster way? What if I just want to jumpstart? I just want to get in there and start doing all these amazing things. And that's when we will say, actually, there is a way. You can go out to the exchanges, and we will help you, and you can buy kin. And we won't do that initially. It will take time for us to get to that point. But there will be a point where we turn that on. And why? Because at that point, the economy will be running, thriving, millions of users, thousands of developers. And so it will just make sense for the user. And even if we did not, why can I say for sure this will happen? Because even if we, Kick, did not allow consumers to buy Kin with fiat currency inside our apps, Kin is a decentralized cryptocurrency. There is nothing that could stop us from an exchange or another consumer app for allowing their users to directly buy Kin from them inside their apps. So one day for sure, there will be the ability for consumers to directly buy Kin with fiat currencies. And that will unlock a tsunami of demand, but it must be done in the right way, the right time. And with that, we're three minutes over. So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next month.